To Spit in God's Eye, Episode 1, Suspicion. What do you see? Blood soaked into the carpet for a mean distance of 1.7 meters by 4.1 meters. Man in center of blood. Right arm is skew at 93.4 degree angle. Left arm is skew at 134.3 degree angle. Right leg is skew at... Alright, alright. What do you see that's unusual? Clarification requested. Define unusual. <sighs> Forget it. Oh, whoa. You're so colorful. Not used to dealing with shards. Uh, oh, sorry, ma'am. I just haven't seen anyone like you before. That's because there isn't anyone like me. To answer the questions you haven't asked yet, no, my skin isn't always like this. It changes colors according to my emotions. And no, I'm not going to give you a rundown of what color means what, or tell you why at this particular moment I'm orange. And please do keep the mood ring jokes to yourself. Now that we've got the pleasantries out of the way, tell me who you are and why you're intruding on my crime scene. John Hastings, uh, ma'am. I'm the facility manager. Here's my ID. District Investigator Kayla Knox. Would you mind telling me how this happened, Mr. Hastings? What? Oh, the blood. Is that man dead? Who is, who is it? A heavy handler by the name of Hal Provender. Aren't you his supervisor? For the love of Abe, that bloody mess is Hal. He was a good guy. Then you'll be wanting to explain how he was murdered in his own locked building, a building that should have been full of heavies, hell-bent on defending him. Speaking of Provender's heavies, where are they? I need to speak with them. They're not here. They should be here. They live here. They never wander off. Do you see any heavies here besides mine, Mr. Hastings? The building was empty when I arrived. Well, why are you here? I mean, nobody but me and Hal have access to this room. How do you know he was dead? He was expected at HQ this morning. My bosses figured he was sleeping off a hangover, and they sent me down here to wake him up, log a reprimand, and get the heavies out on assignment. Instead, I found him dead and his heavies gone. Poor Hal. You supervise four teams of heavies at this training facility. Did you notice anything unusual about any of their behaviors this morning? I only supervise the handlers. I don't take much notice of the, um, the heavies. You were supposed to be supervising Provender. Did he check in with you this morning? No. So why didn't you come find him? That's your job. HQ shouldn't have had to send me down here to find out why he didn't deliver. Well, uh, sometimes the guys forget to check in. It happens. Usually I let it slide. Uh, do you have any idea who killed Hal? I've got a hunch. You. Grab him! You hold yourself still, Mr. Hastings. Arms firm. Don't you give no trouble. You no, know, you're making a mistake. We'll see about that. It was my first murder investigation in my five years as a district investigator, and I was glowing green with confidence. My heavies bundled Hastings into the hover car, and minutes later, we arrived at HQ. My green faded a bit when we ran into my supervisor, a norm by the name of Gary Rice, just as I was having Hastings deposited into his cell. Grace, Kayla. This was supposed to be a simple job. Not so much anymore, Gary. Meet John Hastings. He's the manager of Provender's training facility. I trust there's a reason why you just locked him in a cell. Murder is a pretty good reason. I've booked him on suspicion of murdering Hal Provender. Bug Eye, requesting 3D rendering of crime scene and security footage. Acknowledge. Estimated time to completion is 4 minutes, 17 seconds. You really think he did it? 
killed one of his own handlers? I don't know. He was acting suspicious as hell at the crime scene, playing dumb, and I know there's something he's not telling me. Who else could it be in a restricted access building? You think Provender's own heavies could have killed him? No. They've been hypnotically conditioned to accept their handlers. They're like children. They don't have the mentality to cold-bloodedly kill the only adult figure in their lives. They might give him hell, but they'd never attack him. So where does that leave Provender's missing heavies right now? At a bar somewhere? Searching for another authority figure? Search me. I've never heard of heavies disappearing as a group like this. But I'm just a paper pusher. You're the investigator. What do you think happened to them? I don't know yet, but it looks like someone intentionally got them out of the way first so they could go after Provender once he was alone. It takes a lot of force to subdue a whole team of heavies. Somebody with a lot of resources. You think the sages could be involved? Maybe. The sages are constantly in conflict, always trying to find the next genetic innovation. This could have had something to do with that. With so many mistakes like me, I wonder why they keep trying. But heavies aren't experimental. There's nothing genetically valuable about them. Maybe Beck is trying to weaken Abe for some reason? Who knows? Something doesn't smell right, though. Damn, sages. I wish they'd all go away and leave us in peace. Don't let Abe hear you say that. 3D reconstruction complete. Let's have a look and figure this thing out. Begin security footage playback from today's first door entry event. A hooded figure. They were very careful to stay disguised. Doesn't look big enough to be a heavy. Could be a norm or a shard for all I can see. Taller than Hastings, though. They've got a security pass to open the door. I wonder how... Not that hard to steal or forge, I suppose. They're talking to Provender's heavies. I'd give anything for some audio here, or a clear view of the mouth to read lips. Looks like the heavies are just walking out voluntarily. It's odd. Bug Eye, why has the projection stopped? Remaining security footage is deleted. Deleted by whom? No further data available. Bug Eye, are you being honest with me? Kayla, you know Bug Eyes aren't capable of deception. They're like biological machines. Maybe that's just another norm prejudice. <sighs> Bug Eye, display crime scene rendering. I trust at least that's available. Analysis of cause of death. 99.3% probability of death by repeated blows to head from one instrument. Angle of wound suggests attack from above while sleeping. Body moved after death. Probable weapon. Sporting bat. Metallic. 5 kilograms. Have you noticed the time index? Less than 20 minutes between the end of the security cam and the start of the crime scene. And it must have taken the bug eye a while to get there after you called it. Bug eye, extrapolate time of death from available data. Death occurred between 9.39 and 9.46. Confidence interval, 95%. I was on the scene at 9.50. The killer must have slipped away just in time. I thought that blood looked fresh. Bug eye, overhead view, please. Standard grid overlay. Zoom section C12. Enhance. Looks like somebody scrawled a message there in blood. Can you read it? I think it says... Leave this alone, Knox, if you don't want to get hurt. But how... Who would have known I'd be sent there? Only someone in the department, I think. I'd never been threatened like this. Certainly not with a dead man's blood. Whoever had done it had been careful and calculating. That didn't describe Hastings. But Hastings was the only lead I had. I went back for another talk with him. Alone.
You've got the wrong guy. I know. You do? You'd have to be an idiot to stick around at the scene after the murder, and this killer isn't an idiot. But you were on the scene long before you should have been, which means you know something you're not telling me. Save us all the time and trouble of me threatening you, and just tell me how you knew to be there. It was just a routine inspection. It's routine to just walk into a handler's room that should have been full of heavies without buzzing? Try again. Maybe something more believable, like... Vampires hypnotize you into doing it. Uh, oh, I... I saw two security overrides logged in on his door. Uh, it's part of my job to monitor that. Now, I checked the security cam, which uh, I know I shouldn't have, but I saw you and I saw the body on there. Better. You didn't happen to delete any security footage, did you? What? No, I, I couldn't if I wanted to. It streamed straight to Abe HQ. Now, what else can you tell me? Were there any threats? Any rumors of trouble? I, I hear things sometimes. Uh, sometimes about one of the eggheads. Careful, Hastings. I'm recording this. You don't want Abe to hear you insulting him. Sages, then. The one they call Beck. What did you hear? You have to give me something, Hastings. Otherwise, you know what Abe is going to do to you when he hears how you let this murder happen right under your nose and lost track of a whole team of heavies. I got this tip in the morning. Sorry. I got this tip this morning that Beck is planning some big action in this district soon. I was going to warn Hal. He's a friend and he has heavies. But when I saw him dead, I panicked. Played dumb. I was worried you might suspect me. Hastings, if you'd acted any more suspiciously, I'd have shot you on the spot. That may have been the stupidest plan ever concocted. Yeah, well, I'm not special like you. I'm just a All right, that's it. I'm keeping you overnight. What? Why? Because you impeded an official district investigation, and if you don't give me the name of your informant, you're going to be here a lot longer than a night. <sighs> My cousin, Violet Hastings. You're going to have a hell of a time talking to her. She's one of Beck's genetic researchers. She lives at Beck HQ and rarely goes out. They don't like Abe's investigators there. You must have a way to contact her. I can call her and get in to see her because I'm family. That little loophole isn't going to work for you. You're screwed, Knox. Just because I'm colorful doesn't mean I can't blend in. The case was big and getting bigger by the second. If Beck was involved and murdering Provender was the first step in some sort of turf war with Abe, then it was the kind of case that could make a career and earn Abe's permanent gratitude. I had to talk to Violet Hastings as invisibly as possible. Infiltrating the headquarters of a powerful sage like Beck wasn't going to be easy, but I had a plan in mind. The first step of the plan was Royal Victoria Hospital. Like most every shard, I spent much of my childhood there, undergoing tests by my sage's scientists to see if I'd be a successful genetic experiment. Like most every shard, I was a failure. Specifically, I was a failed chameleon. I was fortunate to be healthy enough to release. I knew I'd find my friend Hachi at Royal Victoria comforting the less fortunate. Hachi, over here! Stay back, Kayla. This kid's mucus is poisonous. Aren't you in danger? I can afford to lose a few of my tentacles. Besides, the doc gave me a vaccine that works most of the time. Risking your life to play with a four-year-old? Somebody's got to. Of course. Don't be ashamed. I didn't mean anything by it. You know me too well, Hotch. Then purple the heck up. <laughs> I take it you're not just here for my stellar company. I need to get into Beck's HQ to talk with a genetic researcher. Huh. You've always been so by the book, Kayla. Why so eager to bend the law all of a sudden? It's a murder case. So apply to a district manager. Have them make a diplomatic request to Beck's people. For a murder case, they might let you in. If I do that, a lot of people are going to notice this investigation. This isn't just a murder. This could be big. 
really big. But if anyone realizes that, a norm is going to sweep in and take charge, and a shard like me is never going to get the credit. So now you're a glory hound? Not for me, but you know how everyone thinks shards are worthless. If I can crack this case, maybe warn Abe of a serious threat, they're going to start seeing us in a different light. We'll get respect. I could do that for us. You think this is that serious? Deadly serious. If I'm right, Beck is making a move against Abe. A threat against the chief egghead himself. You've convinced me, Kayla. But Beck's HQ... That's tricky. I can get you low-level access, maintenance for the restrooms. It's up to you from there. When can you have it done by? Tomorrow evening. We can meet for dinner. Aren't you off the clock now? How about a drink? All right, I could use a stiff one after the day I've had. <sighs> Looks like work is following me. District Investigator Kayla Knox speaking. Kayla, it's Gary. They found the heavies. Are they all right? All dead. You need to get back to HQ right away. We've got a situation here. Sounds more like a riot. Dozens of raging heavies in all the situation and the riot. Be right there. Duty calls. I wish I had an answer. I arrived to a madhouse. In the center of Abe's HQ Plaza, at the base of the statue of Abe, ten mutilated corpses. How Provender's missing heavies apparently dumped us a message to Abe. In a ring around the corpses, a few very tired-looking handlers waving shock sticks and shouting orders to no effect. Filling the rest of the plaza haphazardly, the dozens of enraged, rampaging heavies. Bug eye, crowd analysis, anything unusual. Clarification request. Anyone who looks out of place. Stationary woman on far perimeter at 65 degrees, 87 meters. Does not appear to have function. Incongruous body. Search language. facial recognition database. Identify this woman. Violet Hastings, genetic researcher. Beck the HQ. hell is she doing here? Unknown. Uh, She's turning to leave. I've got to get across to her right now. Eight heavies between yourself and target. Probability of sustaining serious injury or death should you pursue this course of action is 83.7%. I wish you hadn't told me that. Here goes nothing. Violet Hastings, stop where you are. District security. Stop. Help. Help. Will Kayla Knox survive? What does Violet Hastings know? Who are the mysterious sages Abe and Beck? Who really killed Hal Provender and his heavies? Tune in next time! The Spit in God's Eye is based on a story by Firestar. Adapted, produced, and directed by Paul Murrow. Starring Kylie as Kayla Knox. John Hastings was portrayed by Splendid Bach. Gary Rice and the Heavy were played by Paul Nero. Hachi was Jeff Logovici. The Bug Eyes were played by Steph. The announcer is some girl on the internet. Music courtesy freepd.com. Sound effects courtesy freesound.org. This program is licensed for free use and redistribution without alteration. Available on the net at quietplease.org forward slash 